Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. We're counting down the days. We're one week out from Christmas and I've had the best time this month sharing some of my favorite baked goods and some of my traditions that we use during the holiday season. So I hope you've been trying some of these recipes and today will be no different. We are going to celebrate Christmas no-fail recipes today. You know, if I'm going to make a suggestion for you to add a dish to your Christmas table, it better be good, right? Well, today I've got some really great ones. We're going to start with my husband, who I call Jones, his cranberry salad. This is a favorite in our family, it uses fresh cranberries. It's beautiful in a dish, but it's also great on the plate with turkey or beef. Then we'll do the Fine Mew Wassel. I was at Fine Mew at the University of Georgia, and the holiday party was always the punch bowl with this wassel in it. It's great. And then a beef tenderloin recipe that comes from Come to the Table, which is another noted Augusta cookbook. And then finally, a broccoli and cauliflower gratin that will be in my next cookbook. So we've got a lot to do today. I'm ready to put my apron on and get started on Old Jones's Cranberry Salad. All right, so this is Jones's cranberry salad, and he'll probably say, you know, it wasn't his recipe to begin with. But, you know, every recipe that's in our recipe boxes or in our cabinets anywhere probably started out with a particular order or list of ingredients, and then we kind of start throwing a few extra things in, changing some of the directions, and then it becomes your recipe. So that's the way I feel about this. All right, so it really isn't holiday, Thanksgiving or Christmas without this recipe at our house. So there's a little bit that you have to do in advance. First of all, the cranberries. Let me assure you that you can only get cranberries during the holiday season. So if you like this and you might want to put it on your Easter table, buy extra cranberries when you get them at the store. Just stick that bag in the freezer so you have them to make this recipe. So I used my food processor. I put the cranberries in. Then I did two oranges. One of them I zested because you want that great punch in the mixture. Then I sectioned both of them. I added that to the food processor. You just want to grind that up until you've got a nice coarse look to that mixture. And then I added in a cup of sugar. And then I've let that set for about an hour to just get all of those um, flavors combined and ready to go. All right, so now the rest of the ingredients that go into this. I've got celery, and you want that pretty coarsely ground up too. And then these are my Pearson Farm pecans, and they are just in season like crazy right now. So here again, get extra when you order from them so you have them in your freezer to use all year for what you're doing. All right, so let's just blend this together. And it's so colorful, you know, this, as you can see, I've got a Jell-O box sitting here. So this just goes to show you what an old timey recipe this is. So I have got the six ounce box of lemon jello and this is the hot water that i just took out of the microwave so i'm going to add this whole packet into that and this just kind of cuts this is tart but it's also sweet needless to say jello's got a lot of got a lot of sugar in it um, and i want to stir this just long enough to combine it so now let's add in the ice water, kind of cool that down just a little bit. So this is, you know, you're not going to follow the directions on the Jello box. You're going to follow our directions, which will be on our website at verivera.com. Okay, so now let's add this into here. Oh, and like I said, you can just, it almost makes your mouth kind of turn inside out because it's kind of tart. Um, the smell and the aroma of all of this is so good. And I've got an, um, like an eight by eight or a nine by nine square pan that this is gonna go in. And it's gonna set up, but it's not gonna set up as hard as Jello. So it's more of a relish than it is a Jello salad. All right, so this will go in the refrigerator to set up, but in the meantime, I want to tell you about my 
Fami Wassel that was always served at the Christmas party right before we went home for Christmas break. So the FAMU house itself is very historic. So this was a beautiful party that was set up in the dining room and everybody got dressed up. And this wassail recipe is such a great thing to have when you've got guests coming. It could be simmering on top of the stove, but it uses all canned or bottled juices. So let me go through that recipe with you quickly. So you start with a gallon of cider, then you're gonna add in a cup of cranberry juice, a large number five can of pineapple juice, a large can or either a box, this just goes to show you packaging has changed, of apricot nectar, a box of cinnamon sticks, a tablespoon of whole cloves, a cup of sugar, and a half a cup of lemon juice. You're gonna put that into a big pot and just let that simmer on top of the stove. And when you get ready to serve it, you're gonna slice some apples. You can either have it in your kitchen on the stove with some pretty coffee cups or in a punch bowl on the table. Just be sure to put a plate or a trivet under it because it will be warm. All right, so we're gonna get this nice and congealed. When we come back, we're gonna get started on the no fail beef tenderloin that's from Come to the Table. So I'll see you back in just a few minutes. Welcome back everybody. And if you're just joining me, we are doing some of my absolute favorites for the Christmas holidays. And I'm calling this no fail recipes. You know, if you're gonna cook a beef tenderloin, you wanna make sure your recipe is right. Because to me, there's nothing better than medium rare. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I've had this under the broiler for eight minutes. I'm gonna flip it and then we're just going to let it go for eight more. And in the broiler, you wanna make sure that you don't have it too close to the heating element. I'm in my M-Series oven, so I'm on rack five, which is not directly under the broiler, but it's close enough. So that's gonna go back in for another eight minutes. So let me set my timer there for eight minutes. All right. So let me tell you what I did to the tenderloin to begin with. So that's what was about a six pound tenderloin. You wanna trim it really well. As you can see, this one was done beautifully. And then we're gonna do a marinade out of Lowry seasoned salt, lemon pepper, and soy sauce. And you're gonna just basically make a paste. And I really like to rub it on the meat really well. So I put my gloves on, I coated the whole top and then the bottom of the tenderloin and let that marinate. And then I've got my oven on broil. You saw right after eight minutes, now it's gonna go on eight minutes again. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about this recipe. It comes out of Come to the Table, which is a noted Augusta cookbook. Ann Mitchell, Benita Long, and Susan Wilson here in Augusta did this cookbook. If you don't have that one, I highly recommend it. The recipes in it are great. The photography is wonderful. And this recipe in and of itself will also use another feature of my in series oven that I love, and that is the probe. So once I've broiled it for eight minutes, I'm going to turn the temperature down to 350. Then I'm going to put my probe in the oven and it goes right at the top of the oven. Then you stick the end of the probe in the thickest part of the meat. That way I can register the probe on the oven and I want this to get to 120 degrees for a perfect medium rare because remember, it will keep cooking after it comes out of the oven. Then we're gonna slice it up, you'll get to see that. All right. So when we come back from the break, I'm gonna get started on the broccoli and cauliflower gratin, which is gonna be in my next cookbook. So come back with me. I wish you were here, it smells so good. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Tax Slayer. By now you're probably finished buying and wrapping gifts, but what about those Christmas traditions that we all love? Today I'm gonna to share a few of my favorite for Christmas Eve that I hope you'll like. Number one, guide reindeer to your front door by sprinkling reindeer dust on your front lawn. Number two, 
Christmas Eve PJs. Buy new Christmas Eve PJs for everyone in the family so we're all looking their sleepy best on Christmas morning. Number three, host a Christmas cookie decorating contest. Even better, take to social media and let your friends vote on their favorite. Number four, for young ones, get them ready for a long winter's nap with hot chocolate and Christmas stories. This has been the added bonus of winding them down and up to sleep through the night. Number five, attend a church service. Even if your religious tradition doesn't have a Christmas Eve service, it can be a fun new experience for the whole family to attend a candlelight communion for midnight mass. Number six, give back. Take some time to serve at your local soup kitchen or pay for an unexpected person's meal on Christmas Eve. It'll put you in the Christmas spirit in no time. Incorporate some of these ideas into your family's Christmas Eve traditions and enjoy them for years to come. Welcome back, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed Vera's Corner today. You know, everybody's got their own traditions, but maybe I gave you an idea or two for something new that you could do this year with your family. All right, so this is a new recipe that will be in my next cookbook that comes out next year, and it's a broccoli cauliflower gratin. So, you know, look for something that's unusual to serve at some point during the holidays this year. And this is so colorful, and the vegetables themselves are steam so there's still a little bit of crunch to it once you've steamed them and you want it just fork tender I'm going to just add in some salt and pepper to taste um, you certainly don't want to put too much but I do think it needs a little bit of salt and pepper and then I've got a lot of wonderful ingredients that are going to go all over the top of this all right we're going to start with Hellman's mayonnaise so I'll add that into my bowl and then, you know, I always grate my cheese fresh. And there's just something about that that I just really love. So you can, you can definitely tell the difference between that and the processed cheese. And this is a sharp cheddar. All right, then I've got the tops of green onions. That's again, just another pop of color. I have Dijon mustard, and that gives it a nice little flavor too. And you know, um, so many of my recipes in the cookbook call for durkies, which is kind of a mayonnaise mustard combination. Um, so I might actually twist my own recipe up here right after the first of the year and see what it would taste like with durkies. Okay, so now I'm gonna add in my crushed red pepper and my Italian breadcrumbs. And basically all we're doing here is just making a wonderful sauce that goes over the top of this. And for me, you know, casseroles have kind of gotten a little out of whack. They're either full of soup or, you know, there's so many things and you can't even see what the vegetable is anymore. And the thing that I like the most about this recipe is that you can still see the vegetables and they stay whole because you've just steamed them long enough to get them fork tender. So now I'm going to evenly divide this mixture over the top and I have my oven preheated to 350. Speaking of, that tenderloin came out of the oven. It is so beautiful. I cannot wait to slice it and I'll um, show that to you in presentation today. All right, so let's, let me get the rest of this out and then we'll just take the spatula and evenly spread this around. And then I've reserved a few of the breadcrumbs so that you can have a nice little crisp topping to go on top. And this is a nine by 13 casserole dish. So if you didn't need to make quite this much, you could make two and then you could freeze one and have it ready when you need a quick side dish when it's just six or so people. 
coming over. All right, so you've got a lot to look forward to in the presentation today. Hester and Cook is over the top, literally, with their holiday collection, and I cannot wait to show you what we've done to our table today. We're gonna take it one step at a time. So let me get this in the oven, and I've got some work to do on the table. See you then. Welcome back everybody and Merry Christmas. You know, I've had so much fun this entire month of December celebrating the holidays and also celebrating with all of you. You know, I don't take it for granted for one minute when I run into people, whether I'm on the road with the show or just in my own community. Oh, I love what you made on the show last week. So we appreciate the comments. We appreciate the fact that you go to our website at veryvera.com. You make some of these recipes and that you give us some feedback because we really want to prepare things that we feel like that all of you can use with your friends and family. All right, so I am enjoying some of this wassail right now. And as I said, this was the Fine Mew Wassail from the University of Georgia. And I learned, you know, early on in my life that beautiful celebrations take a lot of effort and a lot of planning and a lot of work. So this is certainly representative of that to me as all of us were in college and everybody had a job to do to get ready for that big party. So serving it like this in a festive glass is nice and it's, you know, great, really hot. It's really good at room temperature, but it really makes for a festive drink when you're having people over. All right, so let's walk back through what we did today. We started with Jones's Cranberry Salad. And as I said, it kind of ends up being more like a salsa or a relish. The Jello holds it together, but not as much as it would if it was just a congealed salad. But it's got a lot of crunch with the cranberries, the celery. It's really a beautiful dish, and it certainly goes beautifully on this table today. Then we moved into the beef tenderloin. No fail, and did I tell you it was gonna be medium rare? It truly is, and again, meat continues to cook when it comes out of the oven. So 120 might have seemed very low temperature to you when I describe that. But as you cut into it, you're gonna have some ends of the tenderloin that are more cooked, more well done, and then certainly the center and the larger pieces are gonna be medium rare. But that was some sprigs of fresh rosemary um, really makes for a pretty platter and you can go ahead and slice it or leave it whole and you can slice it more into a larger medallion as you set the table and then finally the broccoli and cauliflower gratin it just bakes up beautifully as i said it doesn't get like most casseroles where everything has gotten a little bit soupy the vegetables hold up the cream sauce held up on the top, and then the little bit of crust on the, on the top of that really makes for a beautiful presentation. And you know, family style is the way to go at this time of year. You know, leave enough room on the table where these dishes can go and everybody can serve themselves, but it would also make for a beautiful buffet table as well. All right, so the star of the show today is certainly Hester and Cook. The presentation, and this is their holiday sprigs, which is holly, pine, there's some berries, and I just use that as my scape for how to present this entire table. So it starts with a beautiful wood table. Then I use their runner, which has stripes of red, green, a white, and I just put that right down the center of the table. I decided that six was the correct amount for this particular table today. So once I've done that, then I laid out all of my placemats. And again, you wanna make sure that you've got the ribbon that's at the bottom of the placemat evenly spaced and that you use your chairs as a guide to where to put the placemat and again, the next step would be the charger plate. And I love my wooden charger plates. It really kind of went with the woodsy tone here today. Once I've done that, then I did my silverware. And I took a place setting and went to each place. Did my knife with the blade facing the plate, the spoon, then my salad fork, then my dinner fork. And then I came back with my napkins and I used a neutral colored napkin today with a wooden napkin ring. And then, you know, there's always greenery and berries blooming in your yard or your neighbor's yard this time of year. So that kind of embellishes the napkin and the napkin ring. 
Then I came in with my wine glasses. And if we want to do a water glass, you would put that directly beside it. But in this particular case, I'm just using a wine glass. The next step after that is to actually embellish the table. So pine cones, feathers, I have deer antlers, more of the berries. I've got the birch um, votive candles that can go and be lit in the center of the table. And you wanna make sure that you maintain a height that's appropriate so the person across from you can see you when you're having a conversation, and of course on both ends. And then finally, the place cards. These are just a beautiful representation of everything that was done today. So again, I want to thank Hester and Cook. I encourage you to go to their website to look for all of their collections because you know, right after the first of the year, we have Valentine's Day, Easter, and Mother's Day. So remember, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I hope you'll come back again next week. And again, Merry Christmas, everybody. For more of my recipes, visit our website to order the cookbook.